hello there, it's me, Stefan, the host of this, whatever the hell you call it, on Small in Japan. <laughs> That's right, this is the segment where I read my line news tab every single day to give you guys the hottest news that line thinks I should know, which normally isn't very newsworthy. So, it's uh, been a couple days since we last did this, actually only one day. Uh, because there's a typhoon that came through Tokyo yesterday. And, uh, honestly, I just kind of wanted to take the day off. Not, uh, the th Japan's pretty good about the infrastructure not going down. As the, at least Tokyo is, whenever there's, like, a natural disaster. So I wasn't really too concerned about that or anything. But, you know, it's, uh, there honestly wasn't really much news yesterday either. We're in the middle of the Obon summer break where, uh... Most of the normie, the normies are all off uh, taking vacations or going back to their hometowns, even though COVID still is running rampant. And there's also <laughs> multiple natural disasters uh, hitting Japan at once, but it's Japan. People are going to do what they're going to do. So let's take a quick look at today's line news. As always, Line new Line is like the biggest uh, messaging app in Japan, and it has its own news app now. Uh within the app and for the most part I think this is probably just my algorithm as the least popular uh, talent in Japan but every single news story except for like the the actual news is about something in show business normally someone's Instagram picture or Twitter post so let's just get to it today today is actually better than it's been the last couple days as per usual you're gonna have your uh, fluff pieces uh, so the format, if, in case this is your, if this is your first time listening, uh, is the Lion News tab has two rows of really, really use, generally useless fluff pieces with like pictures and like headlines. Um, and then sandwiched in between those are three actual news headlines that have been buried between uselessness and they're just nothing they're just the headlines themselves and then you click on them there's the actual article but they're hard to see and no one's gonna ever actually read them um which is weird and fitting i guess uh so let's actually start with these fluff pieces first off is uh one that is actually not completely unrelated to me i guess uh, so it's a story, it's like kind of more of a, uh, yeah, it's a story about Nonomura Yukiko feeling bad that she's the only one in her family that hit it big. Uh, so Nonomura Yukiko is like a hoso saka, so she's like a show writer uh, and also commentator who's really kind of, kind of uh, started appearing on a lot more shows the last couple years um, as like a, a bit of a... Uh, uh, commentator and I well so she used to be a comedian way back in the day then she got married to another comedian um, and then she mostly just focused on behind the scenes uh, show writing stuff uh, and then all of a sudden maybe like three or four years ago she just started showing up on TV as like a um, a bit of a uh, co as, as like a commentator and Taranto again. I guess where she really started showing up was when she was uh, bad mouthing her her husband's aikata uh, on like a TV segment, and that kind of made people. Uh, it's kind of weird how how things start rolling downhill for a lot of people in in J the Japanese entertainment industry. So like one good appearance or whatever can all of a sudden lead to more appearances, but you're gonna generally be doing the same thing you were doing in that last appearance like all the time. But she's kind of transitioned from being like the uh, the the strict uh, wife of a comedian to just being a general commentator that shows up on news shows and stuff talking about things. Um, but so she made an appearance on on Oka Pero, or Oka Pero, which is a show on Kansai TV, which I can't see here in in Tokyo. I guess I could technically. There's ways to do it, but legally, uh, easily, on regular television, you can't see it in Tokyo because Tokyo's Kanto, after all. Um, but anyways, uh, she's on the show. She talked about how she feels bad that she's starting to hit it big now. Well, her husband is, um, still not exactly, uh, he's, he's probably kind of B, B, C list. He's my Dai Senpai, um, as a comedian in Yoshimoto. Um, but he, he's not exactly at the top tier. He's his his combi's funny. I I like their their manzai that they do. But um yeah, he's 
not the he's he's kind of more on this working class comedian level. Um, although since since salary the salary in Yoshimoto for stage gigs for a lot of times a lot of times it's kind of based on seniority, so he's still getting paid pretty good money for just one ten minute stage gig. Um, uh, although I really I'm I'm not sure he, if he's making as much as like the, um, the big guys, uh, but he's still he's making enough I think. Um, but anyways, Nonomura san used to be my teacher back when I was in NSC Yoshimoto's Comedy School. That's like seven years ago now. Um, and she was like a really, really strict teacher back then too. She took classes really, pretty seriously. Her senbatsu, so like her chosen members, were was really, really hard to get into. Some of the other teachers, like every, they'd like pretty much everyone except for like the worst people would be in their senbatsu classes. But she only had like two or three groups like the entire time that she was teaching us. Um, so it was like a big, it was kind of a, a big deal if you were in her senbatsu. Um, so I, I don't know if she's still teaching at NSC or not. I should, I don't know, but she was a, it was, it, she's, it's interesting seeing her on TV now when she was pretty much a behind the scenes person just a couple years ago. Um, but enough about that. She, uh, all the best for her. Hopefully, uh, Hopefully her husband, uh, her husband's combi, by the way, is Nicho Kenju, uh, and her, her, so hopefully, yeah, Nicho Kenju kind of get more gigs and, uh, she doesn't have to feel so bad about hitting it big while her husband is still slumming it with the sea listers going forward. Anyways, moving on to the second story. I think I've talked long enough about my, about, uh, my old teacher. Uh, it's a Instagram picture story. My favorite. Uh, but this might be interesting, maybe not interesting, but some of you, <laughs> it's, it's hard to say that someone's a post about someone's Instagram story is going to be interesting. Uh, but this story is about Nogizaka 46's Yama, Yamashita Mizuki. Okay. That was, that was a bit of an awkward pause. Yamashita Mizuki, um, <clears throat> who posted an Instagram picture, which is of course breaking news here on the line news app um, and i guess it was a particularly well it was a post about how uh they are uh, y- y- uh, nogizaka 46 had its second stop of its national tour in hokkaido or the yeah its second day in the hokkaido its hokkaido shows for its national tour um and it was her first time in hokkaido uh and uh her i'm just reading the article here guys so sorry if this sounds super boring <laughs> and uh it's a picture of her it's a picture of her at an ice cream wagon with her hair with odango hair so um like ra- little rounded hair uh and she is smiling in the picture which is that's, that's literally that's the first paragraph of this article so sorry if it sounds like i'm just reading a description of a picture that's what that that's what that story says um, and then the rest of this article, the rest of this article is just comments from people, from from people who commented on her picture. So it's just like someone they literally just ripped off their the Instagram the comments on her Instagram post that that say stuff like cute or I wish there was an ice cream worker who looked like you and just just stuff that you don't really need to post. And I guess they have to hit a minimum word limit. But anyways, those are the two top stories according to Lion News today. Let's look at the bottom half stories. And these are actually, this is, uh, well, one of them is actually a little bit more news-y than uh, the typical bottom half stories that we've been hitting for the first couple days of Lion News here. So story number three is Baka Rhythm talking about Baka Rizimu. Sorry, I don't know how to say that in English. Bakarizumu. Bakarizumu talking about uh, Asahi Nao's marriage that she just announced a couple of days ago. Um, and uh, so, he, so he used to host the, the show uh, that Asahi Nao was in back when she was a member of Idolingu, which is an idol group. Um, so, so they've had a long a connection for a long, long time. So Asahi announced uh, that uh, she, uh, when she announced that she was graduating, she asked Bakurism for advice, and she even called him Shisho, or like master, 
uh, she shows like a term of respect for like your dai senpais and like the mas- the master the craft the craftsman really i guess I'm, it's really hard to find a direct translation for it but it's be like yeah master uh so as the cicadas start shouting really really loudly i think there's one on my patio or on my uh, veranda here in my apartment so anyways baka rhythm uh says that he found out about her marriage uh from her sending him a message on uh on in, on twitter because she doesn't know his actual uh email or or line account um and this is something that you're supposed to do in the in japanese I guess really in Japanese business in general is you're, you're supposed to, whenever something happens in your life or whatever, you're supposed to, I guess you just, you do this in any business, maybe not as much, but you're supposed to email all your senpai or, or, or send a line or call all your senpai and let them know that you're having some big life change. So it's like, if you're getting married or whatever, if you had a kid, you have to tell uh, everybody generally. Um, B- b- uh, in the case of show business, you're supposed to say it like before the news gets out. Um, sometimes you don't do it, but uh, that's generally how it's supposed to go. Uh, I have like, and you're also you're also supposed to do that for like New Year's. Uh, so like the second some people, the second it turns like midnight, they'll just send out like mass line messages to like every single senpai they know and it's maybe like happy new year uh hopefully uh you know things will be good next year and i hope we can work together blah blah blah. if we do please be kind blah all that good stuff that's generally how these uh line these 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 uh congratulatory or or explanatory senpai lines go uh so he found out that way and uh, so he was on Wide Show talking about this uh, Wide Na Show, uh, the Higashi no Matsumoto San news show that they do every single week. Uh, and everyone was saying that he, since he's since he's like such good friends with Asahi, uh, she'll probably introduce her husband to to him. Uh, and then he said, like, I don't. It, it depends on what type of person that person is. Uh, he hasn't met that person, obviously. And everyone else, all the other people on the show, said that he's acting like her father. Uh, so yeah. So any, anyways, Asahi now, yeah, she got married to a normal Ipanjin, uh, who she started dating in 2019. Uh, he's apparently a a uh, a barber or like a hairdresser, and uh, so, I mean, best of luck to them, I guess. Uh, yeah, so that's news story number three. That's a little bit more newsy. These articles today, maybe it's because it's a Sunday, are actually like pretty long compared to how, what they normally are. That's kind of surprising. Uh, just as long, but maybe not as interesting. Well, definitely not as interesting to me <laughs> is this fourth story, which is Shida Nene, who's like a gravier actress, and she's an idol, a gravier idol, and she's also an actress. Uh, Gravier, of course, just means like she's in bikinis all the time. Uh, is going to be in the new Kamen Rider. The Kamen Rider is like Ultraman or Power Rangers kind of. Uh, it's one of the big three uh, of those costumed hero shows that are always on in Japan. Uh, it's a big deal. It, it never really got as big in America as Power Rangers did, you know, back in the 90s, back when I was a kid. Uh, but it's probably bigger in terms of culturally it's got it's got a huge impact here in japan i know there's going to be a new common uh, shin common rider movie coming out next year i think or is it this year um and so it's a it's always a big deal to get cast in this even if it doesn't necessarily translate to like a long illustrious like a class career so shida nene is going to be in the new common rider and her sister, who's also an actress, is happy for her. There's like a huge like paragraph about this and stuff, but I honestly don't know much about Shida Nene, and uh, so she, I mean, so it's, I guess it's good for her that she's gonna be uh, in the in the new Common Rider. It's a good career boost. It's a nice paycheck, I think. Uh, I honestly don't know enough about Common Rider to really talk much about this. If it was Ultraman Tigger or something, I'd be able to talk about it, but Common Rider, I'm not a huge not not it's like i don't hate the show i just haven't really watched it because it's on early on the weekends and i don't want to wake up early to watch it and i don't have a dvr too much personal information probably anyways let's take a let's take a look at the actual news stories here 
So, story number one of three here for the actual news. Uh, the Obon U-turn rush is in full effect. So Obon Yasumi, like we covered the last show, is like the biggest travel season. Well, Golden Week's probably bigger. But it's one of the three big travel seasons in Japan. Uh, and it started this year on a Thursday. And I guess it's already over. I think it goes a little bit longer. But this is like the peak Obon U-turn rush. So everyone's coming back home uh, for work and everything. So back to like Tokyo. Uh, so the roads are all clogged. It says that Tokyo stations just crammed full of people at the Shinkansen, the bullet train uh, platforms. Uh, so, and they talk about how people are crowding PCR testing facilities and everything to get the negative tests that they need to go about their lives. Uh, and and so they interview this lady, and she says that since this is the first uh, summer or Obon break in three years without any restrictions or COVID, you know, COVID restrictions or anything that, uh, she was able to go out free and be free and live her life or, and, uh, enjoy her summer break. So we're still in the seventh wave of COVID here in Tokyo and well, Japan in general. Uh, but people have been going and traveling and they, I think I, I watched this, not in this actual article, but they're talking about how travel rates during Obon are around 80% of what they were before COVID. Uh, and, but so when you factor in the fact there's no foreigners in the country yet, there's no tourists able to get into the country at this point, unless you're part of a tour group, that is not fun that no one would, no one would ever actually want to be in one of those tour groups. But anyways, if you aren't in one of those tour groups, you can't be a tourist in Japan. So if you factor that in, it's pretty impressive. I think that's for the most part, Japanese people are back traveling like before the before times even as cases are rising, uh, although they've, they've leveled out a little bit. Uh, so, yeah, I think Obon break actually lasts a couple more days, technically, but I, a lot of people are probably going back to work tomorrow, on Monday. Uh, so, yeah, it's a kind of a quick Obon this year. Has Obon always been this short? I always felt it's been like a... I thought, I thought Obon was like a week, but it's apparently just a four-day thing this year. Anyways, moving on to story number two. This story, it's not like a breaking news story or anything, but it's interesting, I thought, that this would be in, like, line news. It's an article, and really almost more like a long uh, survey of people about long COVID in kids. Um, and long COVID, it's, it's a thing that doesn't really go talked about much, I guess in general, but especially here in Japan. And it's like, it talks about how long COVID is hard to detect for a lot of parents, uh, for of kids in Japan, <laughs> so it, just scrolling through this really long. It's pretty long. It's like probably it probably takes like a good like ten minutes to actually read. Um, but they talk about uh, they they talk to the parents of these kids that have long COVID and also the the like some kids who have long COVID. And they so they talk about the symptoms more more specifically. They really kind of focus on the 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 fatigue elements of long COVID and they talk to the, these parents that think like, Oh, I thought my kid was just being lazy, but apparently it's long COVID that sort of stuff. So I think this is just kind of a, a um, first step in getting Japanese people to recognize long COVID as a thing and to um, try to take it seriously in terms of uh, their kids well being. So not necessarily uh, I don't know if it's going to necessarily lead to any changes per se, but hopefully it'll get these parents a little bit more aware of like the fatigue elements of long COVID. Um, it's really, it's not, not great. I got COVID a couple months ago and I'm still, I don't, I, my taste buds, I don't think are fully recovered yet. I don't know if they ever will. And, um, uh, my, yeah, I, I'm not physically right, I guess still. So yeah, it's um I can identify with this, but and it's interesting. Hopefully, this leads to uh, more awareness of this. And the story number three, it's not like a. This is also not really a breaking news. It's like another. It's another long form article. It's yeah. I really do think Sunday Sunday must be like the long form article day here on Line News. This one's actually another long form. This time about the dangers of the water. So they talked to a 20-year veteran lifeguard, or as they call him in Japan, life saver, about the dangers of being in the water. So not just, they talk about strong winds, uh, going in the water while drunk, not a good idea. 
uh, and other dangerous animals besides jellyfish, uh, which is, I don't know if you've ever been stung by a jellyfish. I have, um, not fun. Uh, yeah. So they're t- they talk about, uh, they talk to a lifesaver, a lifeguard about, uh, the various dangers and accidents in the water. And it's a longer, it's a long, uh, it's a long article. By the way, the animal they're talking about that is, uh, that's not a jellyfish that, they, that you need to watch out for is the Akae, so um, stingrays. If you, like me, are a child of the early 2000s and you watched Animal Planet back in the day, you, of course, know the dangers of stingrays thanks to the unfortunate, untimely death of Steve Irwin. Uh, so it's nice to always have a reminder that stingrays are very deadly and uh, can potentially uh, cause you great harm with their tail barbs. Uh, you know, they like to hang out in the sand. So if you're wandering, if you're just stomping around the beach in the in the water, you might step on something you don't want to step on. So yeah, nice little warning there from this 20 year lifeguard. Uh, it's like a pretty, I guess this is an article lifted from the Tokai region, so like the Nagoya region. And apparently there've been 82 different people who've had accidents in the water. And of those, 25 people have either gone missing or died in the water, uh, which is, I mean, so it's a, it's a four year span between 2016 and 2020. So it's like not a, uh, it's not, it's, it's, I guess that's like what five per year. So it's not that many people, probably zero would be ideal, but yeah, just stay safe in the water guys. I'm not sure if anyone listening to this art, to, to this podcast is going to have that issue but yeah if you're going to go to the beach just uh stay safe watch out for stingrays so anyways thank you guys so much for listening uh my name is stefan you can find me on twitter at stefan underscore tetsu find the show on twitter at small underscore in underscore japan and we have a patreon that i am kind of rejiggering uh to match whatever new format we're gonna do uh, you can find it at patreon.com slash small in Japan. So until next time, thank you guys so much. I'll see you guys. Take care. Watch out for stingrays.